chena eni Omweta maina ya mba munu malawi Imane nele lanso ulimi wafoja Jojo mkacha wanchoti ulimi ubite pato golo Imanya mula foja kumasetwe tepoti Ubiti saku misika ya option Jojo mkachoti alimi asama futike Zonse zizi kuteka nditama Mapele kama saka otindi la foja Lima imi la lima foja Masika Tama Maiwa alimi ya foja Maiwa alimi marawi Tama Maiwa alimi ya foja Maiwa alimi marawi Tama Maiwa alimi ya foja Maiwa alimi Actually, I'll begin by saying the background of the project uh, is like uh, in 2012 there was a national conference on child labor in Lilong, whereby all sectors met and agreed and uh, divided the like the act activities or actions ag against the child labor in Malawi. So the agriculture sector was also. Uh, given some subsectors like tobacco, tea, coffee, and the like. Now, in tobacco, we also have uh, associations, buying companies, and the like. Now, as associations, we are also tasked to do something. So, our role mainly was to train farmers on the uh, dangers of using children. And then there is also another arm in that same, or another component that is to do with the decent youth employment. So, we took the angle. We took the angle of uh, decent youth employment. And we got funding from ECLT, the Eliminating Child Labor and Tobacco Growing Foundation from Geneva, Switzerland. So they started funding us in 2016. But initially, this project was initiated in Malawi we were by Nasi Farm. We got trained by Nasi Farm, and thereafter, we took over. So from May 2016, we rolled it out in uh, four districts of Mchinji, Chisi, Doa, and Rumpi. When we came to 2017, we have added Zomba, whereby we are training farmers in a uh, risk assessment, starting from their homes. From their homes, now they go to their farms. After their farms, they are also going into their communities. So we are using uh, this uh, model to at least remove the hazards that are there in order to create a decent environment for young workers. You remember that uh, the Employment Act of 2000 says uh, 14 year old child 
can start work in Malawi that can be uh, paid on. But that work has to be light. Now, in the communities that we have in Malawi, you know, the environment that is there cannot fit, cannot fit to qualify or cannot qualify to be uh, safe for a young worker. So what we are doing is we remove or reduce the risks. But who is doing it? The farmers. So actually, uh, Occupation, Safety and Health in Agriculture, we are doing it together with the Ministry of Labor through the Directorate of Occupation, Safety and Health. So we are actually complementing government's effort and even the Directorate itself does appreciate to say it was supposed to be government doing this. But since you are there, let's do it. So we'll be finalizing in October 2017, but with hope that probably we can also go into another phase. Looking at the, the work that you are doing, these are like the routine things uh, that are done in, in the communities of the country. They are seen like the things that are not hazard. How are people receiving what you are teaching them? Yeah, the farmers in the first place they are like wondering to say, oh is this hazard? You remember we say, or people say, if uh, you don't know, that thing doesn't exist. So we have lived with these things. But with the training that we are having, now the farmers are now starting to realize, to say, we are really in trouble. We are living with hazards. For example, living in the same house together with animals, it's also a hazard. And if there are children there, it's more hazardous than maybe the, 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 old, the old people. So the reception is good after the training. But if you just go there and tell them to say, stop this or remove this, no, you get struggles, and we've been having those. But if you train them, they go through the steps of risk assessment. They now begin to appreciate. Right now, they are doing it in their own homes, uh, renovating kitchens, renovating toilets, on the concept of occupation safety and health in agriculture. So we are very happy that after training, our Malawian farmers can really change things. But if there's no training, no, it's tough. You are giving out the small cash handouts, maybe to do the things. How are the communities making it to make sure that even if you go, they can do such small things in their communities? Yes, you're right. What we're doing is actually not giving cash, but we are supporting with material. If they have had a risk assessment, and that risk is, for example, in Doha. They want to build a covered bridge. They did. Now we're saying the community should mobilize sand uh, and the rest of the materials. The project can always buy cement and pay the skilled labor only. So there is no direct injection into the community with cash, but we buy the materials and supply the materials to the communities. And we pay the labor direct to the, uh, the skilled laborer. So there is no cash being distributed but rather supporting through materials, yes. So, so far, maybe how much have you spent in such initiatives? Yeah, like last year, when we had the first phase, actually the project is a 25,000 US dollar project. Within six months, we have to ensure that we have trained the farmers and the, we have at least disseminated the information to the uh, communities because the farmers that we're training, we're taking them as role models or uh, trainers of trainers. After they get the training, they should also replicate the same to their fellow farmers. So uh, this time around also we received 25,000 US dollars, which is around 18 million kwaja, but dispersed into the uh, six or five districts that I mentioned, Mchinji, Nchisi, Rumpi, Do and Zomba. Yes. Any challenges maybe that you are encountering along the, the way as you are implementing the project? Yeah, challenges that we are facing uh, include when we find a community whereby it's a trading center and for example we say all maize mill owners should guard their uh, maize mill machines they will tend to say we cannot afford because the, it is not in their budget so in that sense and even just to approach them it's really hard you know some business tycoons in the country are really harsh even to their workers so if you are new to them they also receive you uh, badly, so problems. That but kind of suffice to appreciate, like in Inchisi, the district executive committee 
uh, mandated the district child labor committee in the district through the office of the uh, district labor office to say go around and warn the mezmin owners in Nchis. So they were dishing out warnings, letter uh, of warnings to say by 2nd November every mezmin owner should make sure that the district is covered, I mean the, the, the mezmin machines are covered or are guarded in the district. So those are just some of the, the challenges, yes, hostility of uh, business owners because they don't participate in the trainings.